I think the fund market as such is growing. So there is a, today we have a bigger demand for good quality funds than ever before. That's the good news. The bad news for us uh, creators of funds is that uh, while the demand is growing, the offering is growing probably even faster. So the biggest challenge is to, to be seen, uh, to, to get uh, awareness uh, that we are there. And yeah, that's probably the biggest challenge. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Edit Undo podcast. We are we have a very special guest today, but I think over and above that, I think we're going to have a very interesting discussion because it's not every day that you get to speak to somebody who is in the font and typography or typeface industry. You know, um, as as a designer, and you know, I'm sure a lot of the people listening, um, we kind of play around with fonts in our in the different layouts and pieces of work that we do and it's you know it's it can sometimes seem like a a small part of the bigger picture but it's crazy when you think about the amount of time that it, and attention to detail it takes to actually bring a font into into this world and so i'm i'm pretty excited for this discussion so we are going to be chatting with ivo today and I think it's going to be an interesting one because, you know, he's had the opportunity to work with some of the biggest organizations in, um, in, in that space. And then he's also sort of taken his own, his own path and kind of started to forge his, um, you know, forge his journey in, in, as, a, as a founder and as a, an entrepreneur. So I think I'm, I'm quite excited for this discussion. I have a very, you are very welcome and I'm glad to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Alfie. Yeah, I can definitely cool. say, uh, Alfie, um, this, this is quite exciting. And um, just a little bit of background of how we managed to get Ivo on the show. Um, some of you may know uh, all the different um, online publications such as Wired and Medium. I think it was on Medium. I saw a, a typeface that was... Um, created and designed by one of the team members um, within Ivo's organization. And that's kind of how I just typed up an email and got hold of Ivo. And uh, it, like Alfie said, it's, 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 it's interesting and it's such a niche. Um, and even though I use fonts every mm -hmm. single day, I know so little about it. So <laughs> maybe to get started, um, Ivo, can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about your background, what you've been doing, where you are now? So um, I did a, uh, many years ago, I did a vocational training uh, as a media designer, but the name is really mm -hmm. misleading because it is more like the, 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 the person who makes uh, the work from designers like printable or ready to be published mm -hmm. in whatever kind of medium. So I don't know what the, what the English word is for this, but so I was like this, this uh, more like a technical media designer, whatever. Uh, and I really had an interest into the, the typography uh, side of things. So, um, but I had no choice over this. So I really had to fix like um, errors uh, made by designers, etc. And um, mm -hmm. later on, uh, I decided to um, study uh, print and media technology. So this was really, again, uh, a, a, a more like an engineering kind of study, uh, but with mm -hmm. many uh, business parts included, uh, also marketing uh, and these kind of things. And um, I was more and more into this 
typography thing. So I really uh, dive deep into this topic, uh, even wrote a, a, a German speaking blog about it, also called Fontwerk, by the way. Uh, mm. So I, I upcycled uh, the, the name of my uh, German blog later for my uh, foundry. Um, mm. And um, I also tried to design typefaces, but this is really so, so much of work. I'm, I, I need, I need re results almost daily. And um, mm. as a marketing guy, uh, you kind of have these results or have these kind of words uh, work. Um, and um, so I, I also did a, a, um, an internship at a phone shop international. The story is actually much longer, so I really try to compress it as much as possible. So I did this internship and uh, mm -hmm. uh, aiming to become a type designer or aiming to learn more about type design. But uh, even there, I realized, well, this is not something I, I really can can see myself for the next years or decades even. Uh, but I, I had the chance to look into other areas of the business and the, the, the part of the business I was most interested in was the marketing part. And um, I, I also, you know, uh, try to um, bring myself or my ideas into uh, the, the work. And uh, it ended in a second uh, internship in mm. uh, at Font Shop San Francisco, where at their, that time uh, they had the, the, uh, uh, the marketing department for the international Font Shop website. And with uh, great colleagues like Stephen Coles or others, I really had the opportunity to learn about Uh, marketing. Uh, and at the end of my internship, uh, Joan Spiekermann, who was the uh, ex-wife of uh, the probably more popular uh, Eric Spiekermann, the type designer, and both uh, were the founder of Fontshop, she asked me whether I would be interested in starting um, when, when I would be finished my, would have finished my study, whether I would be uh, interested in creating a marketing team for mainly for the font font library. And I said earlier that uh, font job was responsible for both uh, the, the font font library and also this distribution uh, network, the font job network, where they sold uh, fonts from font font, but also other founders. So, uh, and yeah, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, yeah, sure, I, I can imagine doing this. And uh, so I w uh, started uh, being a marketing director of uh, the font font library, which was huge. Um, and I think this was, Something that was very special about the font shop company was that uh, people like me who have not proven to, you know, do anything about marketing had the opportunity to do uh, these kind of jobs. But also like other co uh, colleagues, uh, Jürgen Siebert, who was the marketing uh, director for font shop Germany, he was a phys phys physicist or uh, Peter Weitz, who was the uh, the uh, company director uh, she was actually an English teacher uh, so mm. this was like the kind of spirit uh, we had at Font Shop wow. and uh, so we were all you know uh, kind, kind of trained on the job by, by, by just doing it mm. okay so yeah okay, I, you, you, you can you, yeah sorry you can imagine that there's so much to talk about this special company and um, with mm. Font Fair, Uh, I try to, you know, um, to, uh, you know, uh, take some pieces from this uh, spirit and, and create something new around that. Okay. That's very cool. And I, I think, I think it's interesting to sort of see, because I think more, more and more as time goes on, people from different, um, from different disciplines are sort of congregating in different areas. You know, I, there, the, the, there are a number of designers that we've spoken to that are, either architects and then moved into our industry um, or have come from, you know, many different places. Um, and I think that's very interesting because then you get a, a very diverse set of skills. Um, but what, what would you say it was um, that sort of made you decide to actually strike out on your own path? Because, you know, you've been working for the, the um, one of the, the biggest companies and you, you'd sort of got into a place where you'd established a name for yourself and sort of carved out a specific part of the, the industry that you are in, um, interested in and that you are operating in. Um, why did you sort of decide to take the, the path of starting your own thing? Yeah, so uh, so we got acquired by Monotype, uh, the kind of the market leader in this field. And this was an interesting uh, time for me. I learned many new aspects of, of the business. Uh, I learned uh, also... 
uh, like a different culture. I'm not saying that this is a, a better or worse culture. It's just it was just a different culture, and I really appreciated this, like maybe rock, rock star attitude, like just do it and see what comes out, and mm -hmm. we're doing great things with small investments and really mm -hmm. thinking about the idea and monotype is a different kind of company this is a, a, at that uh, at that time it was a publicly traded company so they really had to look after their shareholders uh, and um, sometimes i had the feeling that the creativity i was looking for was not um, not present uh, enough for me if mm -hmm. this makes sense so um, although, or even though I learned a lot of, about business things to, to look at the fund uh, uh, industry from a different angle, I really want, missed this creative uh, anar anarchy kind mm -hmm. of approach. And um, so it, it was just a natural um, yeah, thing for me to start my own thing. And really, um, maybe even saving uh, this font shop spirit a little bit, but also adding a little bit, uh, some pieces from what I've learned uh, from Monotype to it. Um, because, um, yeah, yeah if okay. that's, that's, that's it. And uh, also mm. I, I've, I've heard from many other peoples that they miss this as well. So I try to reconnect them again under the font work umbrella. And this is, uh, many of the designers I'm working with now are also also web developers or marketing people. They are mm -hmm. former uh, font shop or monotype colleagues from, of me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit? You say, um, you know, it was the perfect opportunity for you to bring back what was most important for you in the space and bringing those things together again. What are these things that you are referring to that was slowly going away in big spaces like monotype and the the thing that that you really wanted to focus on and bring to life in front back mm -hmm. uh, there are many things so for instance uh, if you are a publicly traded company you have to grow all the time like you uh, um, you say to your shareholders well this year we grow by that percentage and if you if 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 you fail even or, or, or if you miss this this goal mm -hmm. even though it's just a, a little bit it's a, it's a fail so you have to save money uh, maybe uh, lay off people mm -hmm. or uh, cut budgets whatever and and uh, so you can get the feeling that it's hardly uh, or it, it's it's often not about the product itself and yeah. i was really into yeah. fonts into typefaces mm -hmm. and if you only talk about uh, uh, people, uh, budgets, uh, revenue, uh, you f and, and you are a creative person, you are coming back home and think, well, mm. what am I doing here? Or, or, right? Yeah. And, and is there anything I can do? So, so when I, when I, when I uh, um, started or started at Monotype, uh, mm -hmm. first I was like, okay, now I will show the big guys uh, how the business works right uh, because mm -hmm. uh, i know about creativity and i know about uh, designers i know about designs etc but mm -hmm. you soon realize um th this doesn't work this way so <laughs> yeah. uh, because they have their again uh, and it's not not saying that's better or worse it's just different um because mm -hmm. they uh, are they are only accountable to their shareholders so um and um I tried to, you know, maybe change some things here and there, but this was also turned out to be very difficult. And um, and so more and more things I really liked uh, about my job, like kind of disappeared. And uh, the the remaining piece at the end was really the people, uh, mm. my my close team, but also in in a comp even in a company like Monotype, many great mm. people worked there, nice, talented, experienced, incredibly mm. experienced people, and this is really a, a lot of fun. But uh, I missed the, the the product part of the fun, so Focus. I really wanted yeah. to decide like what kind of typefaces do we want to release, how shall they be named, how many weights, uh, at what price, uh, what uh, license, how do we 
want to present them on the website, what kind of marketing activities mm. do we want? Also, the, the, the direct connections to the customers, which is really important. Mm. You don't have this in a company like Monitor anymore because you are, mm. I was responsible for the e-commerce marketing. Other people mm -hmm. were responsible for customer support, yeah. other people for whatever. So, and, and uh, at Font Shop, we were really, even though maybe we appeared like a huge organization, we were actually a really small team. Uh, like in Berlin, we were about, I don't know, 40 people or so. In San Francisco, 15 or 20. So everybody was kind of involved in anything. And and this is what I really missed. And this is what I'm now even more than, than ever before. I'm responsible for everything. I'm, I'm in, hmm. uh, you know, yeah, I have to deal with yeah. it. And this is really what I like. All, mm -hmm. Even though oh, this yeah. means a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I must say, um, I, I went to go look at FontVac, you know, obviously playing around, looking at all the new fonts you guys release, like the, the nice font. Um, and it's, it's hard to put into words, but there's definitely um, a stronger focus on celebrating the craft that is typefaces and how you navigate through the, the FontVac website. And obviously as a UX designer, this is where <laughs> my uh, UX analysis, it, it's almost as if you get a sense of experience from what the typeface is. And you, you also bring a little bit of focus in to um, how the font um, originated, who were the people involved, um, and not just the, you know, the, the paper value of, um, the font, downloading the actual usable thing, but focusing, like you said, on the, the design part, which is the typeface part of it. And um, it really mm -hmm. comes across. It's, uh, it's really nice. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. That's, that's, that's uh, kind, kind to hear. And, and this is also what you're saying, celebrating it. Mm. Uh, there's a reason why our main uh, navigation uh, options are fonts, services, and designers. There's no mm -hmm. Evo tab. Or, or whatever. And it's not about me. It's really about the funds. It's about the people who are making this, and it's about the services mm. we offer. That's it. And then, yeah. you know, celebrating this, and also thinking about every step of the user experience, uh, and no, also knowing that uh, UX design is changing all the time, and there's no no end. We, we aren't mm. done yet. So we know yeah. that there yeah. are things to improve. We just yeah. we are figuring mm. out every day what do we need to improve, and mm. talking to people and getting this feedback and this is really great and, and he hearing about their problems or, or, or issues they are facing and trying to mm. solve you know help trying to help them solving their problems that's really what it's all about and this is even uh, also i'm earning le much less money now than i mm -hmm. earned at monotype yeah but i'm a much mm. happier person mm. because i can you know i don't know work with yeah. other people who think like like me yeah, mm -hmm. I get this you. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think you're, you, you're so you right. Um, especially, it's, sorry, I, I just ahead, wanted to mention, you. like, one of the things that I found that I think I wanted to just highlight a little bit um, is that you sort of uh, talked a little bit about the fact that one of the reasons that you sort of moved from the big, the, the sort of big organization to this, like, to doing your own thing was the fact that you're responsible for so much more of the process, right? Mm -hmm. um, and something that, that I think is, interesting about that is um, Steph and myself both just came from working at a really big bank um, mm -hmm. and we were both in, well, my company is not necessarily, well, it's much smaller than ABSA, um, but my team is also much smaller. So I'm responsible for so much more. And, you know, Steph is, I, is like, I think the, the, the first designer in, in the organization where, where um, she's working at. And so we also have like a lot more responsibility and there's something to be said for being responsible for the results of what you do because when you're when you're in mm. when you're in a really big organization you can kind of like um this you can avoid responsibility because yeah. there's so many because mm, there's so many people like there's there's always like a fail safe there's always like another layer underneath or above you that can kind of um take responsibility for things and so you sort of get disconnected from your work and i think i can I can really relate to, to, to what you're describing. But I think for me, the one thing that's a little bit different, and it would be cool if we could, um, you know, just explore this a little bit, because I, I guess I've also got a bit of personal curiosity, is about, like, the actual 
model of sort of working in the type space because for a lot of us um, creative people, designers of different walks, we sort of just really interface with the the font file. Like that's really all we know mm-hmm. about your whole industry. And I'm sure there's mm-hmm. so much more that that, that, that actually goes um, that goes into it. Um, and so can you can you tell us a little bit about like what what your work actually looks like like because I, I, I'm mm-hmm. sure it's uh, the, in in the whole process actually designing the the symbols is only really a, a small part of it so how how does does it go from like a group of symbols in some sort of design file um, in design software to actually publishing um, something that different designers can use mm-hmm uh, yeah, sure. So um, you said yourself you have only access to the f- actual font file. But before it comes to this, um, first there's a design, whatever, a, a specific uh, problem to solve or a design idea, whatever. And then mm-hmm. you need to uh, make this idea into a, um, a group of letters that works together. You cannot have an A, this style and then Z, that style. So everything needs to mm-hmm. work uh, together. This includes not just the design, but also spacing, um, kerning. So these kind of things, uh, sizes, X height compared to the uh, uppercase letters, etc. So many, many aspects there. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have, um, so this is the aesthetical part. We have the language part. You have to decide what kind of languages do you want to support. And this is, this is like a Pandora's box. Um, so many options there. Um, European Latin, um, um, for instance, or African Latin, uh, Cyrillic, Greek, Ch- Chinese, Japanese, etc. So this is this is like this can be a huge topic. And also uh, how many styles uh, you want to have, like uh, from light to bold or black or even uh, uh, italics and and widths like an extended compressed. Uh, so. You have options in all directions, so there's decisions to make uh, from a design standpoint all the time. Um, naming, etc. And then you have um, uh, the, the technical part, so like what kind of screen quality are you aiming for, or uh, late uh, new, newer technologies like variable fonts or color fonts, do you want to support that? So variable fonts are it's like basically one font file that includes all these these options I provided versus uh, like in the past we had all these like 20, 30, 50 font files that you need to install where the fonts uh, is, is basically just one font file that offers all these options and even more because everything in between. Um, you have uh, open type features um, and you need to make sure that it works in all these ever-growing uh, environments we're not talking about like adobe products or mm. or browsers we talk about figma and uh, powerpoint and whatever it needs to work in in like at least the major applications um, mm-hmm. and what what the way fontwerk works is uh, we work like a publishing house so as i said before we mm. have currently 13 designers um, and um, they are not employed by Fontwerk. So they are working on their own behalf uh, and they submit their designs and we discuss, oh, is this, is this, mm-hmm. does this make sense from a design perspective, from a marketing perspective? Does it fit into a library, etc.? And once we have agreed on a, a collaboration, on a, a distribution contract, uh, we are working together with them, uh, give them a design assistance, say, well, look at this, you can do this maybe this way or that way. And then together we uh, hopefully come up with an even better design than they have submitted. And uh, mm-hmm. as soon as uh, the design has been approved by all of us, we are producing the fonts, um, uh, meaning all these technical um, implications and, and stuff. And at the end, if the font files are ready then we uh, uh, think about uh, how we uh, bring it onto the market what kind of marketing activities uh, at what price etc and the name mm-hmm. name is a big topic um, most mm-hmm. in most cases uh, the name takes at least the same amount of time as the design sure. takes <laughs> wow yeah Can because we... everybody says uh, all good names are take uh, yeah go ahead mm-hmm. sorry 
I wanted to um, talk a little bit about the the most recent release you guys had, which is the Nice Typeface. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's quite a simple name. It's quite self-explanatory. And you were just saying, you know, the name takes long. Can you firstly maybe tell us about, um, you know, how are you currently marketing the new release of the Nice Typeface? What was that process like? And also where did the name come from? (laughs) <laughs> so the name uh, I'm I'm being the marketing guy, and there are not that many marketing people in the fund industry. Uh, my main goal is to find the formula for the perfect typeface name. So I'm close, close, but not but not ready yet. But I'm close mm-hmm. to have found the the formula. Yeah. Um, uh, but <laughs> one key parameter is really that the name needs to look good in its own typeface, mm-hmm. right? Um, and mm-hmm. the, some of the recent typefaces we have uh, released, uh, the, we found the name by just first defining what are the most interesting characters here. And some of the most interesting characters from the nice typeface was actually N, M, W, these are all the same kind of, mm-hmm. um, come from the same uh, genesis or yeah. C, E, uh, uh, also an I, an I uh, or a J. So this, this should be included. So then we had N, I, C, E. Uh, same was with case typeface, uh, where A, S, E have the same endings. Um, and we wanted to show that they are, um, yeah, they, they end in the same uh, position. And then mm-hmm. I had written like C A S E, and then was like, "Oh, this is a nice typeface." And I'm I'm doing a lot of research uh, whether it's taken already, and sometimes you're surprised like case or nice was still available, and was like, "Why not? Yeah. Why not use it?" Um, yeah. And I'm I'm, but it's 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 really it's really a difficult a really difficult part of the typeface uh, design mm-hmm. to really find the name but so we had found the name uh, one one other by the way uh, other ideas f- uh, for the nice typeface was a uh, magazine like mm. mega but not a magazine yeah. but oh, a magazine, magazine. Yeah. does it, you know what i mean mm-hmm. because magazine, uh, yeah. we have these four width uh, not not uh, we have these four optical sizes we have these many styles so we have a huge mm. Um, uh, a tool set uh, yeah. for, uh, and then we wanted to say it in the name. But the downside of this was uh, that it, it limited the the you know the the, the limited also the the, the the typeface family to this like editorial uh, um, use case or right. But nice mm-hmm. can do much more in uh, for branding, etc. And and magazine really mm. also o- often limited it. And um, also, it's kind of a joke, and I try to avoid jokes because jokes are only funny one once, right? And <laughs> after two years, if you look at the joke, and it's really get it really gets boring. So these are some of my uh, uh, magic uh, n- name finding ingredients. Uh, but there, there, there is more to this. Um, and uh, marketing, yeah. Um, this time um, we really focused on um, uh, great artwork. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, Anja Knust, uh, our current designer, she yeah. really gets into uh, the typeface, tries to understand what it is, uh, uh, what it can do, and. Um, we also um, created a, a video, a small video or, or video snippets even for social media mm-hmm. accounts because uh, we have this uh, nice includes four optical sizes. So we have a poster version, a headline version, a text version and a, a micro version. And as the names suggest, um, the poster version is the most eccentric uh, of the f- uh, family. So you can use it really l- in large uh, wow. applications. Uh, while micro, uh, as the name suggests, uh, is supposed to be used uh, in very small sizes, five, six, seven mm-hmm. point, like a, a caption, for instance. Um, yeah. And the, the uh, and 
This combined with the variable fonts technology, where you can uh, move between these um, optical sizes, um, uh, made us uh, think that a video or um, animated yeah. uh, ways to show it uh, makes most sense here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then we, we make this. We, we spent a lot of time in, in explaining it, so writing a story about it, uh, translating it, and uh, try to yeah, show it in the best possible way in a website and uh, work together with what I call multipliers, like uh, um, magazine um, editors or blogs, blog writers, and, and talk to them and yeah. say, well, do you want to write about it? Can we collaborate uh, in some way mm -hmm. or another to maybe find a different angle to talk about and these kind of things. Mm -hmm. sure. That's very cool. So, um, one one thing what we mm -hmm. what what we what we don't do is we we don't uh, uh, work together with uh, distributors at the moment. So we, you can only get the typeface uh, exclusively from us. So, usually other foundries maybe they they also collaborate with like FontShop or MyFonts or whoever uh, to maybe. F uh, use their newsletter mm. um, to also promote it yeah mm -hmm. yeah well i really encourage any designers that's listening to go check it out um, the typeface is called nice i'm looking at it now and it is an absolutely stunning typeface um every every size every every single one um, variant is really beautiful and I don't know what it is about it, but this relates to the question I want to ask. When I look at this font and I just like see it in all the different applications that you are showcasing it as, it really comes across, it's very obvious that it's a good quality typeface. But for me, someone who, who doesn't quite understand the intricacies of typefaces, I can't really put into words why. So this is my question, like, mm -hmm. what qualifies a good typeface? How do you make a good quality typeface? <laughs> That's a very, very tough question. It's probably easier <laughs> to identify a bad typeface. Uh, every uh, speaker man uh, always, always said that type is or fonts like are, are like air. Mm. You don't realize them until it's bad. <laughs> Yeah. right <laughs> um and it's it's come and i think yeah all of the things i i said so it's it's it needs to work together and it's really mm. i i'm it's probably impossible to to really give a definition of what makes for a good typeface it's um i think if you are a, a, a de designer and are looking for mm. typefaces the easiest thing is probably probably to trust the creators so uh, maybe mm. get into the topic a little bit more and learn uh, about uh, the, the foundies maybe that have the most reputation or look at what mm -hmm. what do other designers use and and uh, you, you often see a pattern like uh, that's that's uh, some time ago i had to to pick a typeface uh, before i started fontwerk and uh, after I left Monotype, so I knew I didn't want to use anything from Monotype, not because it's it's bad. They are most of them are actually very good, uh, but I wanted to. It was this part of my life where I needed to do something new. So I, I I asked myself, so how do I find a typeface now? And the only good uh, solution or answer to this question I had was. Okay, I look at my favorite foundries, and I have maybe five to ten or fifteen favorite foundries, and I looked at their websites, knowing that almost everything they are doing is great. I can't mm. uh, uh, find something that is bad, and that's probably a, a good idea to like, um, you know, get to use um, your favorite foundries, and mm -hmm. uh, also um, get in touch with them, like. Tell them what you need, um, because we, as I said before, uh, things are changing, and um, uh, we want to know what what you guys need, because otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, we do something for 
yeah. Yeah. We need to make something yeah. that you need because we need to <laughs> so yeah, live from this. <laughs> survive. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you survive, sort of survive even, it. yes. Mm -hmm. Sort of a yeah. customer center. And there's also I mean there's designing the, your font. Exactly, but I mean also there's uh, there are different there's also a budget approach to this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you I mean the nice typeface is is um if you want to have the whole family, the whole the whole super family, it's getting pretty expensive. Um, we have typefaces that are less expensive, and maybe even our our least expensive typefaces might still be too expensive for you. There are other options like um, Adobe um, Cloud um, or a font stand, for instance, where you can rent typefaces. And if your budget is really, really low, or if your budget is zero, because you're working for NGO for, or whatever, or a student, uh, maybe Google Fonts is also a, a good solution mm -hmm. or, or other free fonts mm -hmm. there. Uh, but talking about students, uh, foundries like us uh, or Swiss typefaces or others, they offer student discounts, uh, for instance. So mm -hmm. um, there's always a solution sure. um, to yeah. when it comes to budgets, should be. Yeah. Um, so, so the two the two more places that I'm hoping that we sort of get to discussing today. Um, so, the first is a little bit more around like usage and licensing. I think you know, with any sort of um, digital uh, asset that you create, piracy is always going to be a question or a thing that sort of floats around your head. So, that's the one thing that I'm um, that I'm hoping we discuss. Uh, but the but the other one which I, I I'd like us to maybe talk a little bit about first is a little bit more about. Um, what some of the projects that you've done and and maybe more specifically can you maybe tell us about the project that you've done you know because you've worked in different com types of companies and at different scales and on different types of um uh, type projects which one for you has stood out the most and and why whether it was as fun work whether it's you know a passion project or whether it's something that you did um previously at the at monotype or one of the bigger organizations mm -hmm. Um, no, uh, well, I mean, Fontwerk itself is probably my <laughs> most recent interesting project. Uh, but mm. I think there are two two core projects uh, I was responsible mm. for at uh, FontShop. One was mm. uh, the introduction of uh, web fonts. Mm. Uh, web fonts are very natural these days, but uh, they are not that old uh, they mm. were introduced in around 2008 2009 and this was exactly the time when i started at font shop uh, and my first mm. uh, task was to come up with a, a licensing model for for web fonts and before we started with font font uh, there were only two uh, companies that had something to offer one was typekit this was mm. a, a startup a, a company outside of the font business that um, mm -hmm. identified this need and they offered uh, a, a way to like uh, yeah um, a license uh, web fonts but um, and the second was typotech but they all were based on um, traffic so the more traffic the font the web fonts generated the more expensive mm -hmm. the licensing got, and uh, mm. this was also a subs. No, this was a, a, you never had actual access to the font files. And at Font Font, we decided to uh, give the web font fonts to uh, we call them web font fonts. We, we give the web fonts to the customer so they can put it on their server, mm -hmm. um, um, and we also decided to. Uh, um, the the licensing uh, what should be based on page use rather than traffic because page use was a more for, from my perspective a more realistic parameter to identify mm -hmm. um, right is this a huge website or a small website and the font size uh, uh, was uh, um, the bigger the font the more traffic it generated and this didn't really make sense to me so i came mm -hmm. up with the idea of uh, having web fonts licensed by page views and now everybody is doing it or most of most uh, companies 
Most wow. web fonts are, are uh, licensed by patients. So I <laughs> kind of invented the page rules licensing, it's which is so totally That's stupid amazing. because if I if I tell this. <laughs> That's maybe amazing for for anybody who has uh, dealt with that. But if I tell this to like my neighbor or my mother, nobody will <laughs> understand what know. I'm talking about, which is really strange. <laughs> but this is well, this is really, really, really cool <laughs> that that you can. <laughs> Thank you. So this is really cool to have, like at least in this this industry, have this kind of influence, even though it's just like. Uh, it's just like a, a licensing parameter, which is the uncoolest thing in the world, right? Mm. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, if you talk about uh, most interesting or most important project, this was the one. And the other one was like um, the fontshop.com relaunch. And uh, some years before, I already uh, was the pro in an agile web development process not sure if you have experience with that there's this product owner who is really responsible for like getting everything connected and mm -hmm. uh, some years before i was responsible for the fontfont.com website which is a font foundry website which was already a big project but then some years later i uh, said well i can also do uh, the fontshop.com project not knowing what I was talking about, because this was a huge, a really huge project. You can imagine we had about six people, uh, both designers um, and sure. developers, but also um, uh, um, project managers, six in-house mm. and about six from an external agency. So we had about 10 wow. to 15 people working full time on this project for wow. about a year or so. So this wow. is really... in. And like also knowing that, um, yeah, this has so so such a big impact on on like the company, on the people who are out there, uh, the designers. So this was really, really tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So previously, Ivo, you mentioned, um, you know, for for people who can't afford um, very niche, good quality fonts. Uh, they can look at mm -hmm. the, the big players in the market who either offer free fonts or they offer a more affordable mm -hmm. model such as Adobe fonts. And the reason why I think of Adobe fonts as well is um, very often if you are in the creative industry, you have the Adobe suite mm -hmm. and sometimes that comes with the access to the Adobe fonts library. Mm -hmm. This can also be a an obstacle, I would say, for designers to even consider any other font um, font mm -hmm. house or um, foundry because you know now you already have access to this massive library. How do you see yourself or Fontwerk fit into this this competitor world, or how do you play with these big players? Is it even are you guys even considering? what the impact is of uh, Google fonts, Adobe fonts on, on your vision for font back? Uh, sure. Uh, almost every day uh, I'm thinking about these things. Um, yeah, there's no right or wrong in here. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, it's interesting to, to use Adobe, for instance, um, to, to be in, in included there uh, because everybody al already has Adobe installed. So it's the, yeah. for, for me, Adobe fonts is like more like the, the most interesting marketing channel even because mm. everybody out there who is a potential font customer yeah. has Adobe installed, all, all, most of them. Um, but um, there's also something very interesting in the exclusivity option. So Fontwerk at the moment is, is an ex exclusive foundry. And when I thought about this other project I was talking about, uh, where I had to find uh, a font for my own project, I, I checked my favorite foundries. And only later I realized they all had one thing in common. My favorite foundries, even like just it, it, they were all exclusive foundries. So mm. it it worked for me that I found the foundries and their fonts more interesting than others because 
there were exclusive foundries. And so at the moment, the exclusive way is the is our approach at Fontwerk, uh, hoping okay. that mm. we will be among the, the designer's favorite foundries at some point. Yeah. But I, it might be an option to... to to uh, work with distributors like Adobe or others uh, mm. in the long term. But so far it works and it makes things also easier because um, we have, we know, actually we know all of our customers. Mm. And this is, this is a, a very, very um, um, valuable uh, asset. Yeah. And it, it makes kind of sense, right? Because now that people are... Um, getting to appreciate typefaces more because the the industry mm -hmm. of typefaces is growing compared to five years ago it makes sense that there's different lanes and different segments of people you know and you're saying mm -hmm. you you want to play in the game that is that of exclusive typefaces mm -hmm. so that makes sense to me um but maybe one last question almost before we close off Thinking back on everything you've done so far in this industry, what would you say has been some of the, the biggest lessons that you've learned and currently one of the biggest challenges? Wow. Very good questions. Uh, the biggest lesson, yeah, probably the biggest lesson is that this business is about people. Right on both ends, uh, people are mm. making typefaces, are designing typefaces, and uh, make the fonts, and you know, bring them onto the market, and people license them uh, and use them, and uh, and um, yeah, and you have to value people more yeah. than you value the fonts, and if you, if because we are all creatives, uh, so we are on the same boat and uh, we have to collaborate. We, we need to see ourselves as partners mm. uh, because if we don't, don't if we as, as creators of fonts, you know, we, if we don't see the users of fonts as partners, we will fail. And, and, and on the other hand, uh, for me, typefaces and fonts are like uh, a kind of a superpower for designers. If you know yeah. about the well, if you know well how to use fonts, or, then you have an advantage uh, compared to your competitors. Mm. Um, so this and what was the other one? The biggest challenge? Yeah. What is your biggest current challenge that you are facing? <laughs> The biggest, so <laughs> I, I think the font market as such is mm -hmm. growing. So there is a, mm. today we have a bigger demand for good quality fonts than ever before. Yeah. That's the good news. The bad news for us uh, creators of fonts is that uh, while the demand is growing, the offering is growing probably even faster. So the biggest mm. challenge is to to be seen, uh, to mm. to get uh, awareness uh, that we are there, and yeah, that's probably the biggest challenge. Sure, and I think that's and, uh, uh, anyone that's in the space of you know digital creation, digital media. That's kind of uh, the challenge we all face, right? It's the most expensive currency is um, attention from uh, exactly. our audience. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Sure. exactly, and this is where. Just coming slightly back mm -hmm. to to the exclusive part, it's like exclusivity, and also as a, a, a designer, UX designer, or mm. illustrator, whatever, exclusivity could be the the the, the most important factor, maybe a side of quality and, yeah. and you know, etc. But um, yeah, being seen in this in in these strange times where you get like you see so many great things all the time fonts uh, exactly. photos yeah. illustrations etc this mm. is amazing but i do believe that in any case uh, if you keep 
uh, doing your best and uh, listen to your customers, maybe even more important, uh, you will survive at least. Yeah. Not big, it's and probably not, a, not, not that yeah. kind of business you, where you will become rich, but <laughs> you will survive. <laughs> And how, how do you, it's, it's a very interesting thing you're saying about, you know, listening to your customers and um, how on earth do you listen to your customers by supplying fonts? Is, is that like, do people send feedback over email or do you specifically reach out to big customers that constantly use your uh, platform or what does that feedback loop look like? Yeah, all of this, uh, being present in social media. For me, so the, the main or the most interesting part of social media is actually the interaction with customers, mm. not, not so much like throwing our stuff onto yeah. them, but <laughs> talking to them and, and yeah. listening what, uh, and using these channels to, to interact. Uh, emails, exactly, talk to people, like uh, also bigger mm. clients. So when we get inquiries, I I almost every time I, I start a conversation about basic things. What what are your action needs? You are asking for this, but what, what are your action needs? Maybe yeah. your solution is something completely different. Even if this means I will uh, make less money, I really try to provide a yeah. solution. And maybe this time the solution is, okay, we have this for free solution. And the next time you will come back with yeah. something that... Oh, I've really enjoyed this conversation. It's been so fascinating for me. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of creatives out there that's going to feel the same because we don't get a lot of opportunities to look behind the scenes of some of the mediums that we use on a, not even a daily basis. It's almost a per second, millisecond basis. Um, yeah. So Ivo, thank you so much for your time. Uh, before we let you go, can you maybe let people know where they can find you where they can find font vac, uh, vac if they're interested in some of the typefaces yeah sure uh, thanks for asking so uh, our website is fontwerk.com mm -hmm. uh, you will find the uh, email uh, there hello at fontwerk.com just drop us a line uh, or use uh, a search for fontwerk on instagram uh, linkedin and twitter these are our main channels um uh, whenever we have time, we will answer to anything. And, and no matter what kind of st strange inquiry you might have, we will have at least have a, an, an answer to your problem, maybe yeah. guiding you to somewhere else. Or But usually we can help with anything you want. Amazing. Well, there you have it, guys. We'll also put the links in the show notes and in the social media announcement for the episode. So you can go check out some of the nice typefaces. Thanks, guys. Until we chat again.